Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spore the Warning podcast. This is review number 726 with our review of Plane. I'm Christopher Schnazy. And I'm Stephen Miller. And for joining us for the first time, the Spore the Warning podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week on the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest films coming to a theater near you. But this week, we are catching up on some stuff that came out a few weeks ago, where uh, Plane, which just was in theaters like two weeks ago, is now available on VOD. So we figured, why not? do our civic duty and check out the latest Gerard Butler film at the beginning of the year like we tend to do whenever it is available um but uh yeah my my opening question for you Stephen is uh you know I, I know in the past you have worked as a mercenary sure and uh when you are going to do one of your jobs um do you take your payment for the job with you as you go on the mission <laughs> you know it's funny we don't we don't talk about my mercenary work often enough on the podcast i i have to say there's a difference between my going around money and my payment for the job and i think what you are looking at is the the going around money and mm. i think there's a better word than going around money which i should know because i am as we've established a mercenary <laughs> yeah and 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 you be going around <laughs> see i thought you were going to ask me as a frequent flyer how much i uh related to that like bald asshole character in this movie <laughs> <laughs> no, see, sometimes, Stephen, I like to throw you under the bus when we're watching a film, um, but I save it for things like the menu. <laughs> yeah. Not going to just go for this. Also, like, is, is I, I assume that you have actually flown probably on New Year's or around there. Is Are, are flights usually, like, that empty around no, New Year's? flights are never that empty. I've also, I know this is an imaginary airline, but I have flown from Singapore to Tokyo before, and I've never seen a first class look that shitty on, a, on that kind of flight. Like for sure they would have lay down seats and for sure the asshole would be in a lay down seat. So I don't know already it lost me, but thank you for not throwing me under the bus. We've been through enough vehicle related pain <laughs> today. But yeah, are, are, are you excited to, uh, to talk about this film, Steven? I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to, uh, curious to hear your take on the movie. I definitely, uh, you know, Sometimes you make a joke right before we sit down to record that gives away uh, your feelings of film, but also sometimes you're just making the joke because it's a joke that can be made. So I never right. know whether to to trust your little slip ups or to uh, to just go with it and assume that that's where you're at. <laughs> we will find out soon enough. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say we get started, Stephen? Let's do it. We're going to take a listen to the trailer for Plane, and then we're going to come back and give everybody a review. Captain Torrance, Flight Commander. How can I help you? Fugitive extradition. Oh, is he dangerous? What did he do? Homicide 15 years ago. I don't want to scare the rest of the passengers. I'm afraid you're stuck with this, Captain. Get him on board. Let's have a good flight. Cutting right through the top of the storm. Listen, keep everybody in their seats. No exceptions, all right? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Hill Blazer 119, we are dark. Anyone in your guard, damn it. We're gonna hit. We're gonna hit. They went down somewhere in the Jolo Island cluster. It's run by separatists and militias. The Filipino army won't even go there anymore. The clock is ticking. Every minute matters. We can count those minutes in lives, lost or saved. Hey, 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 wait, wait, get back, get back. We don't know who it is. We don't know who it is. Get back. Listen carefully. This is an emergency. I'm Captain Brody Torrance. I like this guy. Name! Country! Maxwell Carvel, England. Name. Country. I better go after them. My passengers, my responsibility. I'm gonna need your help. You're gonna need this. Former military or something? You could say that. Then why'd they lock you up? No one cares what really happened. 
they say redemption can be found in the most unusual places. If you do this, you'll probably never see your family again. What about their families? I have a daughter, and I have every intention of making a home. Ah! They are going to come at us with everything they've got. We're getting off this island. Okay, so that was the trailer for Plane. Um, this is the latest uh, Gerard Butler film in which he is playing a pilot who, due to a freak storm that he is flying through, has to sort of... I don't think it counts as crash landing because he just landed it in the middle of a uh, an island in the Jolo I mean, is cluster. A, is a crash landing determined by the fact that you did crash or that you well could have crashed? Like, I, I think that's I, the I feel like I feel like crash landing is more than the wheels of the plane touch the ground. <laughs> I, mm. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, plane lawyer, but, but I feel like, I feel like if you just have to land in an unforeseen place that that was just a landing. Um, but, but who knows, whatever. Uh, anyways, he crash lands in the Jolo Island cluster around yeah, the Philippines. Stanford, Gerard only lives once. <laughs> Um, but, uh, basically he, uh, is in a place that is a lawless area where a bunch of people are going to come at them and, uh, potentially endanger the people that were on the plane when he landed it on this island. And Gerard Butler has to team up with a, uh, prisoner who is also transporting on his plane to try to help everybody get out, uh, safely. Stephen Miller, what did you think of plane? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I did think very much when watching <laughs> Plane. Um, but true, true to its name, the best part of Plane is definitely uh, the plane. <laughs> um, this, this movie, quite a bit is actually given away by the trailer, which I, I definitely watched the trailer because when the title came up at the end, the whole audience started laughing, which I think is a pretty uh, universal response to seeing a movie called Plane. Um, yeah. But... The film basically opens with a flight, and as you know, the the plane is going to go down. But watching that happen, I found very entertaining. I hope it isn't realistic. I can't speak to how realistic um, <laughs> it is or isn't, but it felt very real to me. And as a, at least historically, a frequent flyer, it it tapped into something where I felt a kind of level of anxiety that really pulled me in. Um, I think Gerard Butler is very good at this sort of thing. Like, he knows how to establish a character really quickly. You know, he's Scottish. You know, he's badass. You know, he has some kind of vulnerable core. And he's <laughs> going to use all that to make you believe in him and root for him while he convinces everyone else to believe in him, too. And I think the movie does that really, really, really well. Um, once it lands on the island, we enter what is... For sure, a xenophobic, pretty problematic story, right, <laughs> of this, the lawless jungle, the people who are going to murder them and try to, you know, sell them into captivity. And it, it is impossible to escape, like, the problematic aspect of this. It reminded me of No Escape, that uh, Owen Wilson movie <laughs> that yeah. we reviewed years ago, where it just, it takes that idea and it makes it so shorthanded and kind of like the platonic idea of being in a scary place that it almost feels okay. Like, I know that isn't for me to judge, but I was like, oh, this isn't real. You know, none of none of this is real at all. And while being xenophobic, it's at least like more inclusive about it than most movies like this are. Um, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It it tries. It, it is doing a throwback thing. And that throwback thing is totally ridiculous. But like setting aside the ridiculousness for a second i thought it was pretty thrilling the whole way too like i was kind of surprised at how well it managed to keep up the momentum there is basically never a sequence more than five minutes long where someone isn't about to die or under immediate stress or you aren't questioning the actions that a character is going to take next like it is just a yeah. it's a movie we've seen a million times before but it is distilled down to like it's one syllable plain <laughs> essence very <laughs> very effectively um i didn't think it was great it, this was no greenland you know if we're talking about single word gerard <laughs> butler movies 
they, this movie was a lot more just trafficking in tropes. It had a lot more people having to make decisions that don't make any sense or keep trying to do an illogical thing just because they want to make you, the audience, know that it's hopeless. You know, like, Gerard Butler keeps trying to use the radio, even though it's broken. Multiple passengers can't believe their phone isn't going through while they're, like, flying through the sky on international waters. Um, there, there's a <laughs> well, lot well, of stuff Let's, let's that be is... fair. By, by that point in time, they were below the storm already. <laughs> so, yeah. that, like, your phone works when you're landing, and they were essentially landing, so... Eh. Yeah, on a on an island with only trees as far as they could see. Also, Steven, you don't know that they didn't pay for go-go in flight Wi-Fi. <laughs> mm, that's true. And that runs on a different circuit. So even when the, when the electricity goes out, that should still be working. Yeah. Like, like it, it has people being a little bit ridiculous. You know, the, the passengers who are a little bit extra, who never understand why Gerard Butler is making the choices he's making the, you know, Gerard keeps trying to call or talk or do things even when he knows they're not going to go through. But it, it it mostly works. It By the end, I feel like it kind of tries to pull a Captain Phillips like in the last few minutes. And I'm like, nah, you don't, you're not Captain Phillips, but it's okay. <laughs> you, you didn't need to be Captain Phillips. Uh, what you needed to be was a silly, ridiculous, probably deeply problematic action movie. And I think it succeeds on that well enough. Like it's, I don't know. It's cotton candy. Like it, it didn't leave a big mark on me, but I wasn't bored while I was watching it either. So yeah, that, that's where I am. I didn't hate plane. I didn't love plane. I just I rode on the plane, and now I'm here <laughs> to talk about it. Uh, yeah. So so I mean, you know, all the prob problematic stuff that you referenced aside, I had a lot of fun with plane. Um, you know, I, I it's not it's not breaking any molds, but the way it plays in the molds. The amount of set setups and payoffs like you know there there is a scene where okay first of all in, in a normal film that we'd watch about a plane crash or land whatever you want to call it you know there would be some corporate guy who's brought in to kind of either blame the pilot or you know try to argue that like you know try to protect the company try to make sure right. that like anybody who's public facing knows that this is the messaging everything's cool we have to figure out that the pilot was drunk or something so that they can excuse the corporate like uh liability for this accident in this film that guy is almost the corporate version of gerard butler's character like he's yeah. the badass who comes in and he's like yo the lawyers probably want to leave the room <laughs> and he just comes in and starts calling all these shots and like i also love too that you, like he is doing this like research on the pilot, right? And once again, nor in, a, in a other film, it would be like, oh, we need to figure out that this guy's a hothead, and it was probably his fault that the plane went down. And this one, it's like, all right, I, I like, like this guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a badass. He might be able to just get this plane out of there. And like, it, it's it's really playing in like every character is kind of having fun, and they kind of understand the silliness of what they're doing, but they're still taking it deadly serious. And I think that for me. You know, I just had an amazing time watching this. Like, as you said, the initial plane crash scenario, I was definitely like, okay. So yeah. So the one time that like the, the corporate people make the stupid call is like, no, you can't go around the storm. We need to right. save 12,000. Is it dollars worth of fuel or 12,000 fuel, whatever fuels measured in fuel bucks? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Liters of jet fuel. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like like that that's the one guy who's like the corporate idiot who like fucked everything over. But besides that, like everybody is super confident at their job. And I I I just really like the setup and payoff of like you get to see you get to see Gerard Butler get in this fight uh on some random flight in the past, and then you get to see him like leverage those same fighting skills, which are not it's not he's not like doing some crazy choreographed fight. It feels like he's getting the shit kicked out of him all the time, right. which is always kind of the most fun. Like, don't get me wrong, I love John Wick, but I also like, you know, in in the new the, like the new reboot of the Tomb, Tomb Raider franchise, where like they're getting the shit kicked out of him and just barely making out of it, and then deploying one thing that just barely lets them uh, sneak by by the skin of yeah. their teeth. Um, and, like, and this is what Butler does that like Dwayne the Rock Johnson or you know other people don't do is he like he lets you just feel that he is losing all the time. <laughs> he just happens to have more <laughs> determination than the other guy, but he's never like 
more naturally equipped or more lethal or whatever than the other person. He just he wants it more because he has some kind of family member that he needs to get back to. And, yeah, yeah. And it works. <laughs> it it one hundred percent works. And it's like it, it, if you really talk about like what this film does or is right it, it's basically like a video game it's like your plane just went down go to this checkpoint then come back to the plane and implement the final the final plan <laughs> right yeah. it's, there's not a lot going on and it's kind of like when it got to that scene i was like holy shit are we at the climax already this feels like there hasn't been enough time like what's going on and, and i think that like it just it knows what it's doing it's not going to stay too long it still feels like it was like two hours long but it didn't it didn't it, feel... it was like an hour 47 or something and i was surprised because it moved with the speed of like an 80 minute movie like it, it didn't yeah. feel like it lingered that extra 20 minutes yeah but but i but i think it's 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 fun it knows what it's doing and like you know it, wh what more can you ask for but watching gerard butler just be like not even a badass just like a it's kind of like halfway between an everyman and a badass <laughs> It's yeah. just like he's a very charismatic dude who's just going to do what he needs to do to try to get people safe. And uh, yeah, I I, I had a, a lot of fun with it. Like you already said this film is not great. And it's like in my head, I want to say it's great, but it's not great. It's just I greatly enjoyed it. <laughs> well, one thing that intrigues like what the movie definitely is this streamlined, you know, the name is obviously streamlined, but the plot is too. Like there are characters who are brought up here like uh Gaspar, the uh, convict who is being transported on the flight. And we are given a hint as to what his background is, how he's perceived, how he might like upend that perception, what we're going to learn about his past. Spoilers, the movie doesn't really tell us anything about his past. The movie is like, yeah, you know this kind of guy. He's that kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, We're it's not like, going to tell you. He just is. <laughs> it, it does the equivalent of uh, in Looper when Bruce Willis is like, don't get out straws and try to have me explain how time travel works. Just go with it. Like yeah. he's like, he's like, Oh, why, why were you, why were you locked up? And he's like, no one believes the story anyways. And they just continue yeah. on and go on. <laughs> yeah. Like you, just trust us. He's going to have a redemptive arc. You're fine with it. Just, like, don't make us give him the arc. Just like believe that the arc happened and then move on. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, and it works for the most part. The movie also has a, uh, you know, they bring in mercenaries as you referenced before to help, and, you know, it, it kind of felt like Michael Bay, you know, 13 hours or something like this. They're kind of like, oh, yeah, we're the badasses. We're here to like, we're going to go where the military won't go. The movie doesn't show us much of them or use them that much. It just like a video game. It has them be the kind of deus ex machina, like the thing that we know might save the day. And the movie's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you know, these kind of guys when they'll show up when they're important. Don't worry about it. It's fine. They're there. They're mercenaries. They're, they're buff. They're going to shoot all sorts of people. It, it's good. Um, the, some of the corner cutting kind of confused me. Like this movie makes a choice to not show subtitles at all when the, the bad guys are talking to each other. Yeah. And I don't, really know why like like they're just it, it kind of is like the movie is saying don't worry about the motivation they're bad bad guys do bad things they say stuff and they're angry and then they you know are gonna go chop your head off <laughs> like that, that was kind of the vibe <laughs> i got from the movie which yeah. again when the first machete is used i wrote down in my notes like okay that's kind of fucking racist <laughs> um but you know i don't know the movie I'm surprised they named the location of the movie because this felt like it would be another one of those no escapes where it was like some island in an area that we don't know, untread by modern society. And they're like, nope, Philippines, Jolo Island cluster. It's right there on a map right there. That's yeah. where they landed. And it, it's curious that in a movie that chose to be generic everywhere else, it decided to be in a specific place. I, I have no answer for that. It was just, surprising to me yeah it's it's definitely a choice <laughs> yeah okay i have a few questions for you um in this location which appears to be surrounded by jungle and run by warlords what do you think bad guys the hand off money and bribe people what is that money good for because this town seems to be established to just be like a place where people murder people <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't see any like supermarket 
Yeah, that is true. I I mean I assume it's <laughs> going back to John Wick, it's probably the equivalent of like the Assassin Guild coins where it's like we pay you for the job in these coins, which you use to pay other people to do jobs. And it's just a thing where like the money's coming back to them anyways, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they do also reference that they have boats that can go back and forth, yeah. uh, you know, from the island. So That's it definitely true. feels, you know, it, when, when it starts off, it seems like the uh, the bad guys are assuming it was a military vessel of some sort. Like, they're, oh, big plane, it must be soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, and when they find out it's not, it seems like... The film kind of implies that the whole thing is, well, if it's a commercial plane, there's commercial people. And if we get the commercial people, those people's commercial countries will pay to get them back safe. But at yeah. first, I almost thought it was going to be a thing where it's like, hey, we own this island. If we had a big ass plane that we could fly to other islands, we could own those <laughs> islands, too. Right. We could own the world. <laughs> first, yeah. Yeah, that, first Joe. That maybe sounds like world. it would be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it seemed like, like they're one, really concerned with it but who knows yeah it, well it also seems like they like they do this a lot like <laughs> gerard butler enters a room where there's a pile of passports that they just like haven't even bothered to move that are like yeah these are from the last people that we, <laughs> we kidnapped and filmed. well and th th those people were all i forget where they what organization they it was like doctors without borders or something right so like those right, people were like missionaries i think yeah 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 but but like like that that those people were clearly kidnapped somewhere and brought there like i don't think that they have commercial airlines crashing on their island all the time <laughs> um unless in the sequel we find out that they uh the reason all that money's being passed around is to build <laughs> to build geostorm so that, they can cause they, planes to crash on their <laughs> island they didn't uh they removed the subtitles because originally we see that they're saying hey look another plane <laughs> it happened again <laughs> and then the audience just didn't go for it so they just they couldn't reshoot, so they were just like, okay, how about no subtitles? <laughs> yeah, what else, what else did I have? Oh, um, no one has Wi-Fi, but the iPad with a map on it has the exact roads of this random island, <laughs> so Gerard <laughs> Butler knows that there's only one road in and out. Um, I think you would have to fetch that. I, I good movie <laughs> i i let's 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 be fair though i believe that those things would cache that map data right like mm. why like you if you're gonna be up there you can't use go go and fly wi-fi right like there's no oh, way that's like maybe be. they just cache i i wonder how much all map data in the whole world is to cache i stand correct i bet that would fit on an ipad yeah i bet, I bet it's possible and even yeah. if the whole world wouldn't your flight path definitely would right like if, mm -hmm. if you need to be able to you know in an emergency when lightning strikes you and all the power goes out on your plane yeah. except for your 10 minute battery <laughs> should we talk about Thank god for that one <laughs> don't know why they didn't design a slightly bigger battery <laughs> oh i mean that on on the uh, spirit airline or whatever they're they're flying on they only have 10 minute batteries hmm it, uh, th this does like not only is the the lightning strike and the out of control feeling of the plane well done here but also it has some good like i'm a pilot who's good at my job moments that definitely make you you know want to stand up and clap that the movie does a lot right it just uh it passed <laughs> right through me basically it, it just felt like it was like you've seen other movies i'm one of those <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're just doing all tom hanks movies like it starts with sully then yeah. it tries to go captain <laughs> phillips at the end <laughs> in the middle yeah, there all right in between is it, it saving <laughs> i don't know <laughs> ground ground gr uh what was the what was the battleship movie gr ground oh gray no, greyhound 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 <laughs> yeah oh good times <laughs> good times are you, are you all out of questions steven uh Why Why did the the girls know to take selfies with the inmate? Like, did they figure out who he was? I kind of miss, missed that part. Like, did they Google famous murderer? And then <laughs> he came so up? so let, let's talk about the prisoner, right? Like, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. totally on board uh, for the idea of a prisoner being transported on a commercial flight. I mean, there's been whole series of televisions where, you know, there's a prisoner on your plane and the plane yeah. crashes on the island. <laughs> Sure. people love sawyer um but uh wait was it sawyer sawyer was definitely a prisoner right mm -hmm. i um, think so <clears throat> anyway it's been so long 
But um, the thing that I, that was kind of confusing to me is he. Okay, they just caught him. That's what it was. Okay, yeah, yeah. So right. he, he murdered somebody 16 years ago, and they just caught. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, yeah. why are they just deciding to transport him now? <laughs> like, yeah, he's been on good behavior, so we're moving him to <laughs> to the United States. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, they they just caught him, and we don't know how he got caught because he doesn't want to talk about it, and the movie doesn't care to tell us. Yeah, which yeah. is fine. He he was a cool character. Yeah, like everyone here. A compliment I can give all the cast here is they they communicate their character effectively enough just by like being there that you don't really need a lot of exposition. It's just like, oh, it's that kind of guy. Like yeah. everyone, including the the operator at corporate headquarters or whatever, you look at them and you're like, yeah, they're that guy. Cool. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Any last thoughts about this film, Stephen? No, that's that's all I got. All right. Well, you know what that means. It's time for you to put your seat backs at tray tables in their full and upright locked position so that we can give everybody our recommendations for this film. If you're going to give us a must-see, wait for rental, pass the caveat, or must avoid. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what the rating Must-see, recommend like. with a caveat, wait for rental, pass with a caveat, or must yeah. avoid. Stephen Miller, which of those many options um would you give this film i gotta tell you i went into this recording thinking i was gonna say pass with caveat and you've <laughs> moved me up to wait for rental um <laughs> i again i don't think this is a good movie i don't even think this is like top tier dumb gerard butler movie but it is taught and effective and unvarnished this is a plain movie <laughs> you know this is a movie that just is straight up no seasoning, you know, it, it just trusts, <laughs> it trusts you to like what it is and it doesn't bother putting plot or characterization or anything else on top of it. That archetype is not the best movie flawed in a lot of ways, but it gets the job done. You know, when you saw the name plane in a trailer, this is the movie you were expecting to watch. This is the movie they gave you. So good job plane. You never wore out your welcome and you felt like 20 minutes shorter than you actually were. <laughs> um yeah i i'm gonna bump it all the way up to a record with the caveat because i i sat down like we literally were texting like hey it's sunday and we gotta watch something this weekend <laughs> yep let's do plane all right and i was like cool i sat down and i watched it and i was like all right that was that was a lot of fun that was not a waste <laughs> of a sunday afternoon <laughs> so i mean what 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 bigger recommendation can you give than that also, Stephen, one last question. This is a plane. It's it's not like a giant. It's not like a seven forty seven, right? It's it's a smaller plane. Um, there's thirteen people on board. Mm -hmm. Why are people walking to their actual seats? Like, why would they not just like as you enter the plane go like, look, there's fourteen of you. Just sit wherever you. Everybody like, is the plane's not so small that you would have to distribute the weight of human beings. <laughs> across it or maybe it is but you could still be like look just sit wherever you want just kind of you know keep covid distance between your seats yeah and let's call it a day i just didn't i, I couldn't understand why people were like i'm gonna walk all the way to the back you ask a good question but i have been on near empty flights and they didn't tell you you could sit wherever you want so i think your question logical is true <laughs> of the airline industry in general which is they want you in that seat especially like what i would want is for them to be like, hey, no one's on this flight. Sit in first class. Enjoy, enjoy your comfortable seat. But they don't do that, you know. Yeah. Even in real flights, they don't do that. But like, but like, I don't it, know why. In that, I at least get it, right? Because the person in first class paid a shit ton more than you paid. At the mm -hmm. very least, you can sit all the way up before you get to a section that you shouldn't be in, right? Like, right. I, I would understand that, but. There's no, like, outside of, like, exit rows, I mean, I don't know, this made-up airline, maybe their seats are very, very strict, and the further back you go, the less you paid, I don't know. But it just, yeah. seem, it just seems like, like, you know, everybody, JOLO, enjoy your flight. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing that I think is part of the logic, usually, is they want to, they want to know who is in what seat. So if an incident happens, they know who to blame or who to call or who to tell about it. Which is why even like when I've been on flights and 
the person sitting next to me is like traveling with their husband or something and they ask back in trade, you know, to let them sit together. The the flight attendants are often not happy about that because they have like a like a paper list of who's sitting where and they're kind of yeah. like grumpy about having to change it. So what, maybe that's how, part of it, too. How are they going to know where to send your flame and young? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Mr. Miller. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this review of Plane. Um, Stephen Miller, people want to find you throughout the week. Where can they do that? Uh, people can follow my geo sponder. I don't know Plane pieces. <laughs> people can track me at sdavidmiller.com or twitter.com slash sdavidmiller. People can find me at ChristopherInRealLife.com or Twitter.com slash ChristopherIRL. You can find the podcast over at TheSpoilerWarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do so in Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. If you want to let the episodes go live, you can follow us at Twitter.com slash SpoilerWarning, uh, Facebook.com slash TheSpoilerWarning, or Instagram.com slash TheSpoilerWarning. If you want to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at TheSpoilerWarning.com or, or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will come from a track selected from artlist.io, so hopefully you're enjoying that. And uh, yeah, that's it. We will be back soon with another review. Um, you know, we're, we're getting back into it. This is a, a new year, a bunch more films to come out, and uh, yeah, lots to look forward to. So see you in the next one. Bye. Howdy.